Hello students, hello students, you're welcome to Hedro Math Hub. So in today's video, we're taking a quick revision of electrostatics for physics jam 2025. Okay, so let's start the video like this. So first thing we're going to be talking about is the atomic structure. Okay, the atomic structure. So every material is made up of atoms. And the diagram for the atom is something like this, as you can see on the screen. So at the center of the atom, you have what is called the nucleus. So this is the nucleus right here. Okay, at the center of the atom, you have the nucleus, and then around the nucleus, like this, around the nucleus, you have what is called the electrons. So this is an electron cloud. So this electron cloud, that is where you have the electrons orbiting around the nucleus. So inside the nucleus, you have two particles. The first particle is the proton. Okay, the proton. Where the second particle are the neutrons. So the proton is positively charged. The neutron has no charge. Okay, it has no charge. Then the electrons which orbit around the nucleus are negatively charged. So the electrons are negatively charged. Okay, so bearing this in mind, you'll be able to understand how the atomic structure looks like. So the next thing to note is that the proton and the neutron constitute the mass of the atom. The electron plays a negligible role when it comes to the mass of the atom because the electron is very, very small, it's very, very light. Okay, it's very very light compared to the size or mass of the proton. Another thing to take note of is that the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. Okay, in an uncharged body. Okay, that is a body that does not have any charge, a neutral body. Okay, so since the protons positive charge balances out with the number of electrons that are negatively charged, then the body is said to be neutral. Okay, it has no charge, it's neutral that particular point okay now let's talk about the types of materials that you have when you talk about electrostatics first so, type of material we're going to talk about is conductors so what are conductors these are just materials that allow the passage or flow of electricity okay so they allow currents to flow through they allow electrons to flow through example of such materials is silver so you have silver you also have copper then you have aluminium so all these are conductors because they allow free electrons to pass through them. These electrons are not um, tightly bound to the nucleus, so they are free to move around the atom. The second one is um, insulators. These are materials that do not allow the free flow of electrons because the, the electrons are tightly bound to the nucleus. So they are not allowed to flow freely like that. So examples of such materials are you have wood, then you also have glass, then you have plastic. So all these are insulators. Okay, they are all insulators. So we move to the next section, which is the laws of electrostatics. So this law states that number one, like charges repel, and unlike charges attract. What are like charges? These are charges that are the same. Charges that are the same or they are similar. So you have a charge, the positive charge and a positive charge. They will always repel. Okay, a positive charge, positive charge will repel, they will pull away from each other. Okay, they will tend to move apart. Also, the same thing with a negative charge and a negative charge, they will tend to pull away from each other. Okay, but when you have unlike charges, like two unlike charges that are close to each other, like you have a negative charge and a positive charge, okay, they will tend to move towards each other. Okay, because the law of the static state that Unlike charges attract, why similar charges repel. So keep this in mind. Very, very important. Now let's talk about the methods of charging. So charging the material, that means giving the material a charge. A charge can be positive or it can be negative. So the process of giving a material a charge, making the material to have a positive charge or a negative charge, that process is called charging. Okay, it's called charging. Now how can you charge the material there are two methods so the first method is charging by friction or by contact okay charging by friction okay then the other one is charging by induction okay so in this method in this charging by friction the two bodies you have to be in contact with each other okay they will touch each other why in this method of induction they will be far apart they will both be close to each other but they will not touch so let's take the first one charging by friction so this is the method of charging by friction so right here in this diagram we have what is called the glass rod so this is a glass rod here 
the glass rod is used to rub a sick material the sick material so you rub the glass rod to and fro on the silk material which is like a clothing material so when you do that electrons will move away from this glass rod towards the sick material electrons are negatively charged so electrons will move from the glass material towards the sick material okay so you rub it like that for for some time maybe like a minute then once the electrons leave the the glass rod to the sick material the sick material will receive enough negative charges while the electrons that just left the glass rod will have enough positive charges because electrons and protons are supposed to be equal okay but since electrons have left the glass rod the glass rod will have positive charge so after a while it will not look like this so the glass rod after separating both of them the glass rod will become positively charged why a positive charge because it was the number of electrons and number of protons were initially equal but after rubbing the glass rod on the silk material the electrons moved to the silk material so this glass rod will now have enough positive charge okay the negative charge will reduce because most of them have gone to the silk material so the glass rod will now be positively charged okay because the number of positive charges is more than the number of a negative charge so positive charge is greater than number of electrons or number of negative charge so the glass rod will be positive it will acquire positive charge why this sick rod which was initially neutral like it has in the same number of proton same number of electrons but now it has gained more electrons from the glass rod so at this point the sick rod will have enough negative charge the negative charges will be greater than the positive charge so since the negative charges are greater then the, this sick material will become negatively charged. So at the end of the day, the glass rod will become positive charge, positively charged, while the sick material will become negatively charged. So you just charge both of them by method of friction. Also, if you consider a material called ebonite rod, okay, ebonite rod, and you consider another material called four, okay, when you rub ebonite rod on four, okay. This ebonite should become negatively charged while the four will become positively charged so the ebonite should become negatively charged while the four become positively charged the ebonite should become negatively charged because the negative charges from the four will move to the ebonite so the ebonite will have enough negative charge the, the, neg the negative charges of the electrons will be greater than the number of protons so it will be negatively charged why the four, which has lost the electrons, we have more positive charges being greater than the electrons. Okay, so four becomes positively charged. Ebonite rod becomes negatively charged. So take note of that. So you might be tested. I mean, they might ask you a question like this. What happens when you rub um, glass rod on sick? And what happens when you rub ebonite rod on four? It's very, very simple. The ebonite rod becomes negatively charged. Just like we said just now, why the four will become positively charged. And when you rub glass rod on silk, the glass rod will become the silk will become negatively charged, while the glass rod will become positively charged. So it's just like the opposite of the of each other. Now let's move on to charging by induction. Now we move to the next one, which is charging by induction. So in induction method, there is no contact. Okay, there's no contact between the charging body and the material that is being charged. This is the charging body trying to charge this material C. So there's no contact between the material C. There's no contact. There's no contact between them. That is why it's called induction. So let's see the process. So the first thing is the body B, which is negatively charged, as you can see, is brought near near the material C, which is which is meant to be charged. And look at what happened. Once B got close to C, B is negatively charged, as you can see. All the negative charges in C are repelled. They move to the other side of the material, as you can see. All the negative charges in C, they move to the other side of the material. Okay, that is because like charges, negative, negative, all these repel. So the negative charges in B will push away the negative charges in C to the other side of the material C. Why it will attract all the positive charges close to it like this. So you can see that the negative charges and positive charges are not close to each other. That is because unlike charges attract. So once that is done, the next thing is to find a way to add this material C. 
which is this stage two. So once that is done, the material C is now added. You can see it's connected to it. Connected to it. You can do this easily by touching the material with your hand, touching the other side of the material. So once you touch this material with your hand, the negative charges will flow away through your body down to it, down to the earth. Okay. So, but just make sure that the body B is still close to the body C when you're touching it with your hand. Okay. So once all the negative electrons have flowed down, then the next thing is to remove the body B. You can see the third stage that the body B is no longer there. So once you remove the body B, the positive charges that are left in body C will now be evenly distributed around the um, object C. So at first, it will look like this. You can see all the positive charges in body C. They are on one side. Okay, because of the attraction from the negative body, the negative charges here are attracting or they are pulling the positive charges to the left. But once you remove the negative, the charging body, which is body B, all these um, positive charges will not be evenly distributed. They will move back to their original positions. Okay, so this body C will now have enough positive charge because the negative charges have been added. They have gone down to the earth. Okay, so body C will now be positively charged. So that means you have charged this body C by the method of induction because B was not even in contact. B did not even touch body C. Okay, so that's the method of charging by induction. I hope you understand it. So move to the next part, which is the gold leaf electroscope. So this is an instrument used for testing the presence of charge on a body. Okay, if you want to know if a body has a charge, whether positive or negative, test it using what is called a gold leaf electroscope so what does the gold leaf electroscope consist of it consists of a metal plate and a metal rod the metal rod this is the metal rod down here okay both are insulated from this glass container by this insulator here so this is the glass container this glass container is viewable as you can it's transparent you can actually see inside you understand you can see inside so this is the insulator separating the metal plates from the glass then at the end of the metal rod you have what is called the gold foil or the gold leaf this is the gold leaf here okay so that's what it consists of now how do you charge this gold leaf electroscope it's very easy the first way to charge is you can use you can charge it by friction or you can charge it by induction let's talk about the method of induction so let's talk about the way to charge the gold leaf electroscope let's assume you want to charge this gold leaf electroscope with a negative charge you want it to have a negative charge so all you have to do is bring a positively charged rod or body close to it so a positive, you bring a positive charge rod or body close to it so once you do that you are charging by induction here yeah. once you do that all the negative charges in this metal plates we move towards the glass rod they will become they will move close to the glass rod because negative charges and positive charges attract why all the positive charges will move away okay then the next step is to add the the electroscope so you add it you touch it with your hand or you just add it so once you do that all the positive charges will flow away from the metal plates once the charges flow away then you cannot remove this body you remove it completely once you remove it, this electroscope will now become negatively charged. The charge of this glass rod will be the same charge of the gold foil. This is the gold foil here. So since both of them have the same charge, the gold foil will not be close to the metal plates. You can see this distance here. There will be a distance between both the two of them because negative charges and negative charges cannot attract. Okay, so there will be a distance between them. So as it is like this now, the electroscope is negatively charged okay so let's look at the method of testing if a body is charged using the gold leaf electroscope so to confirm whether a body is positively charged or negatively charged all you have to do is bring it near an already charged gold leaf electroscope okay so let's assume this electroscope is positively charged already okay it's positively charged already okay positively charged positively charged positively charged and we'll bring in a body Close to it. So once you bring in this body close to the cap here, bring it close to the cap. 
if this electroscope if this gold foil moves away from the metal plates if it moves away like this if it diverges or moves apart then that means this body that you are bringing close to it has the same charge as the electroscope okay this body is positively charged because it's only positive positive charge that can cause what is called repulsion the repel but if you move this if you bring the body back if you bring another body close to the electroscope and this um, gold foil reduces in size or it's this distance reduces in size or the gold foil moves close to the metal plates or you can say if this gold foil collapses or they move close together maybe they were like this before and they move closer to each other then that means this body has an opposite charge to the electroscope this body is negatively charged okay because negative and positive charges we attract also an uncharged body that's a body without charge okay we also cause this good foil to reduce in size to cause this distance to reduce so two things can cause the good foil to to collapse the first one is if you put an uncharged body an uncharged body an uncharged body will cause the good foil to to collapse and if you put a negatively charged body close to the the positively charged metal cap so these are the two things that can cause this good foil to to collapse okay so doing that you can easily know the charge on this particular body whether it's negatively charged or whether it is uncharged so we have talked about the basics of electrostatics talking about the atomic structure protons neutrons and electrons then we'll talk about the types of materials which are conductors and insulating materials then we'll talk about the methods of charging charging by friction and charging by induction then we'll move over to the gold leaf electroscope talking about what it consists of the use and talking about how to charge it and how to use it to test the presence or absence of charge in a body so this is where we're going to stop for today if you really enjoyed this video please like and subscribe Share this video with your friends. Click the next video shown on your screen right now for the continuation aspect of electrostatics. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed until I see you guys in the next one. Peace.